Hi, I'm Brian McLean. I'm a clinical psychologist with Acquired Brain Injury Ireland. Do you remember what it was like when you first learned how to drive a car? You're trying to get the clutch and the accelerator in time to find the biting point, all the while listening to ins ins instructions from a frightened teacher, and just trying to make sure that you didn't knock a pedestrian down. Every decision you make is conscious and deliberate, and if you remember, you came home from each lesson wiped out. Because having to consciously and deliberately process everything is absolutely exhausting. And this is because you're using something called executive function. Executive function is our amazing ability to consciously control our thoughts, our emotions and our actions in order to achieve goals like learning how to drive. It's what we use when we need to break away from habit, uh, when we want to inhibit our impulses and plan ahead. And we can see it more clearly when something goes wrong. So if you've ever come down in the morning and put orange juice on your cereal, or if you've ever started scrolling Instagram and realized that 90 minutes have gone by, or maybe you plan to stop at the shop on the way home and then you drove all the way home on autopilot. These things happen to everybody. And we usually call it absent-mindedness, but what's actually happening is that we're experiencing a lapse in executive function. Executive function is a little bit like the conductor of the orchestra of the head. The players in the orchestra may be each very talented musicians, but if they come together and try to play without a conductor, the sound can be a little bit off. It's the conductor that decides the pro what the program of music is going to be, when the musicians need to start, which musicians need to come in a little bit more strongly, which musicians need to ease off a bit, and the conductor is continually monitoring the performance, monitoring the overall sound that the orchestra is making, and solving any problems that arise during the performance. So, it's almost like we have two brains. In all of us, there's the older, reptilian part. Uh, the part of us that says, me, my, I want it now, I'm always right. It's like the, the snappy crocodile part of all of us. And that snappy crocodile needs to be ruled. It needs to be governed. It needs to be named and tamed by what I've called the kind of conductor part of the, the, the brain, the executive function. And that's the part that says we instead of I. It's the part that thinks of others. It's the part that plans and budgets and schedules. It's the part that has rules and roles and goals. Now, mindfulness is one of the great ways of learning about executive function and bringing the conductor of the orchestra of the head a little bit up to the, to the fore. When we practice mindfulness, we're observing, not just what's happening outside, but we're actually observing inside as well. Observing our own thoughts, observing our own feelings, observing what's happening in the body. And one of the first things that happens to us when we start to practice mindfulness is we realize how busy the head is how many thoughts uh, are happening at any one time and how our thoughts can wander, almost like a monkey swinging through the trees. And mindfulness is, I suppose, the skill of allowing us to kind of step back from all of that for a moment and say, okay, what is the need right now? What's the focus? So what is the need right now is the great conductor question that allows us in any situation to prioritize a focus for our attention. So picture the scene. You arrive in from the school run. You have to cook a meal, spaghetti bolognese. You have a child in your arms and the phone rings. We talk a lot about multitasking when in fact all of us do better when we ask the question, what is the need right now? 
and we rest our attention on one thing. Somebody with a healthy executive function, somebody who's not tired, uh, will be able to say on the phone, I'll call you back, and then switch off the cooker, and then prioritize the fact that my child needs attention. So in other words, healthy executive function allows us to ask the question, what is the need right now? I remember working with a wonderful guy. He was a Liverpool fan, but I didn't hold that against him. Nobody's perfect. He nearly died in a serious road traffic accident, and he wanted to bring his son to see Liverpool play. Uh, he wanted to put good memories into his son's memory banks. When he told his wife that he had got tickets for the match, she asked him, what time are the flights? How much is the accommodation? What will the overall budget be? Can we afford it? Executive function means being able to plan, but it means being able to plan the detail as well, maybe including all the steps in a checklist. But then being able to step back from the details and see the big picture as well. And seeing the big picture is important. If somebody's speaking, what's the main point in what they're saying? How can I be sure that I'm not getting lost in the detail, but I'm getting the gist of what another person is saying? And so one of the things we do in rehabilitation is ask people to read a text or watch a lecture on, on YouTube, and then write down the three main points. What's the gist? What's the central piece in what people are saying? And that's, that's good practice for executive function. Another great technique we have when we're preparing university students who are going back to college after brain injury is a technique called PQRST. P stands for preview, just glancing over the text, giving the brain an overview of what's involved. And then Q, asking a question that allows or, or invites the brain to have a focus as it reads or as it listens. Then reading the material or listening, and then summarizing. What are the key points in what's being said? And finally, closing the book and looking at the ceiling and testing myself to see, do I remember the, the gist of what I've heard or what, or what I've seen? And many students find using techniques and strategies like this that support executive function that they are better students than they were even before their brain injury. That's not uncommon. We need executive function in order to solve problems in everyday life. If I come down for the breakfast in the morning and there's no milk, without executive function, I'm really stuck. What do you mean there's no milk? Who took all the milk? But in good executive function, I can say, what's the alternative here? Why don't I have eggs for breakfast? In other words, it, it allows me that kind of cognitive flexibility. And cognitive flexibility is absolutely crucial for regulating our emotions. Supposing somebody ignores me uh, outside, I can go straight into thinking, why doesn't she want to talk to me? Why doesn't she like me? Why is everyone ignoring me? And this triggers me to feel sad or worried or hurt or angry or whatever. It's the conductor in the head that needs to step back and say, that's just a thought. What, thoughts are not facts. What's the evidence for this thought? Maybe she doesn't feel like talking today. So being able to step back for a moment and generate alternative thoughts like this is what we need actually to prevent anxiety or anger or depression. So a key executive function is being able to continually monitor myself, my feelings, my thoughts, and monitor other people's reactions. It's what helps me know if I'm talking too much or perhaps not talking enough. I find exercise helps as well. I find people who are fitter and work on their physical fitness on a regular basis recover more quickly. Mindfulness, as I've already mentioned, really helps. Practicing being the observer for five or 10 minutes a day is a great way to rehabilitate executive function. It allows us to practice monitoring our thoughts, our feelings, our actions, and in a way kind of stepping back from them, which allows us to ask that crucial question, what is the need right now? These are the, the basics of rehabilitation, if you like. Then we ask people to learn as much as they can about executive function, to become the experts on their own brain injury. 
and using a resource like the Brain Injury Workbook, for example, to gain as much insight as possible. After that, some of the best executive function rehabilitation exercises are to get involved in practical functional tasks. If I'm taking rehabilitation seriously at home, then I need to be the one who's doing the cooking or the budgeting or planning family activities with support and encouragement from the people around me. If I'm cooking a meal in the kitchen, I might be chopping vegetables, keeping an eye on the meat. And each time I switch attention intentionally, each time I monitor time, the neurons that are involved in the conductor of the orchestra in the head are firing together and therefore they're wiring together. I won't rehabilitate my brain by sitting around waiting for the next cognitive rehabilitation group. I need to get my brain busy with multi-step complex tasks. Finally, we practice making conductor statements. Conductor statements are the things I say to myself, like, what is the need right now? What is my role here? What's my goal? What are the steps towards this goal? What's the other person feeling and what's the central point in what they're saying? Reminding myself to stay on track. And that's executive function. Thank <music> you.